Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at creating some rainbow ghosting effects. Now this is inspired by a piece I did um, using rainbow colours in the background and scraping it off. It's something I did in primary school where you put the wax crayon down and scraped off the, um, uh, painted over black, scraped it off and you saw the rainbow colour underneath. And the first piece I did, it worked really, really well. So I wanted to do it again. So here I am creating a rainbow using the dilution, not not dilutions, the Dina Wakeley paints. Um, it was ruby, tangerine, lemon yellow, evergreen, ocean, lapis, and blackberry violet. I think are the colours that I used. And I'm just scraping on the other side um, my excess paint. So I'm covering it with clear gesso because I thought that that might make it easier to wipe off the paint, um, the black paint that I'm going to put over the top. But the clear gesso I've got is, or the one I was using was a Liquitex one and it actually has some ground in it so it's actually quite rough and that's obviously to create some tooth on the page. As soon as I did it I thought, oh this isn't going to work as brilliantly as it has in the past. On the second page that I'm doing, instead of all the leftovers, I thought instead of doing a stripy rainbow, I'd do sort of rainbow colours but sort of all over the place. So I'm just placing out the colours. I'm using my palette knife to make some of the colours a little bit more opaque than they were. When they're spread out, they tend to go a little bit translucent because I was only using the barest minimum paint that I had left on my palette knives. So just uh, drying off the excess paint with my heat tool because again I want this layer to be really really dry before I start putting the black paint over it. This is where I made my second probably error. I use black gesso rather than black paint and the gesso dries really really quickly and it's got a matte effect. So what I'm doing is spraying over the top with water and using a baby wipe and some paper towel to try and get as much of that black paint off as possible. And it worked okay. Uh, I didn't have the high contrast that I really wanted, but you got the idea. So I'm just printing off the extra black on this side. Now my idea for this was I was going to paint uh, the area black again and then use the woman's stencil so she'd have sort of rainbow hair and a rainbow face, sort of a rainbow tumble of thoughts was my the idea that was going through my head. So I am start to paint out the black again and I didn't learn my lesson, I still continued using the black gesso. Put the stencil down, this is a Dina Wakeley stencil. I just couldn't get it clear enough to be happy with it. And when I pulled up the stencil it didn't really look like much. Uh, so I decided that I'd scrap that and just try and wipe off as much as possible. And I actually quite liked how it started to turn out with the paint over the top, over the paint being removed from the top. The black sort of went into the, all the dents and creases and, and texture of the paint below hand. So it gave that sort of shadowed effect. So when in doubt, <laughs> just add stuff. So what I'm using is, um, I'm using the acrylic paints that I've used in the background and then stamping over the top using the acrylic paints. Now I'm just using a palette knife to apply the paint because I don't, I'm doing it for the texture and a bit of pop of colour, not necessarily to get the perfect stamped image. So spreading out a little bit of paint on my acrylic block and then putting it onto my stamps. I don't know if you see it in screen or not. I do I don't tend to clean my stamps but I do actually wipe off the stamps to get rid of the acrylic paint because I don't want those layers to build up on my stamps, um, particularly on the finer stamps because in future you want to have a clear image. Once I start stamping with the white paint I begin to become really uh, much happier with the page that I'm doing. It just gives the colour in the background somewhere to go and reflect off. I don't know what the scientific reason for it is, it's just adding that white to that page makes it pop basically. And by continuing the circles over both pages it's, it makes the page sort of blend together and run as one full page rather than two separate pages. So while they have sort of 
one's very linear with the rainbow and one's sort of a hodgepodge, it kind of all blends together. So I'm getting out some stencils. Uh, these two stencils are um, sorry, Donna Downey stencils, which I've just purchased and I love the effect of them. And I'm going to, again, go with the white and apply my paint into it. Now, the reason I'm using a paintbrush, I don't usually, but I didn't have a blending tool pad clean to put my white on. So you can see where it sort of bled out around the edges, which I don't particularly mind all that much on this one. Since I did that, I've actually bought a whole heap of makeup sponges from my local $2 shop for a dollar and they work so much better. The image that I'm using is a Jane Davenport image from her Whimsical Girls, I think, book, the one that you can sort of tear out pages and do the journaling in. Um, it's been lots of fun, there's some beautiful images in it and it's sort of given me a bit of confidence to go around, paint, try different things and I'm loath to cut up a book but because it's a reasonable price and it is actually designed as a sort of interactive colouring journal type book, I've actually bought two, one for me to cut up and play with and one to keep because it is such a beautiful book. So that's that's why I'm not too precious about cutting one up because I've actually got one that I can keep beautifully on my shelf like a real book. So I'm just adding extra colour into it. The reason I chose the image was it had that sort of rainbow effect that I wanted in the background of my page. So it it highlighted what I wanted to do in the, in the original idea that I had in my page. All I'm doing now is just going into the background into some areas with some rainbow paint markers, the paint um, Posca pens, which are acrylic paint in a pen form. Again, they're a relatively new addition to my stash of pens that I have and for some unknown reason, because usually I again store pens, they're ones that I use a lot and they're just, they work straight out of the pen. So here are the close-ups of my page. I hope you enjoyed the process and you've got some ideas to take away with you. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel, hit the thumbs up button and hit the notification so you know when to when future videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching. Bye.